Hi guys, I'm working on a little project here and I thought I would just sort of share this with you because it brings up a lot of really great illustrator topics. So what I have here is some artwork that I wanna repurpose for something else. This is a birthday card and I'm gonna make this into a little print for a friend of mine who is setting up their nursery. So um, I wanna remove the birthday things and just focus on the fish. But what this brings up is why it's so great to work in Illustrator because things are completely scalable when they're vector. And so uh, I'm gonna walk you through how I repurpose this artwork. So to begin with, I've got everything here. I'm just gonna select it. All of my layers are unlocked. And I'm gonna make a copy and paste. And when I do this, um, just know that when you wanna do something like this, make sure that you have paste remembers layers checked and that way you keep all of your original layer structure with that. So I'm gonna move over here to a much larger artboard and then I'm going to scale this. So if I just double click on the scale tool here, I open up the scale dialog box and I'm scaling this 225%. So it's getting much, much larger. And then I also wanna make sure that I check scale strokes and effects because um, I've got some seaweed brushes in here that I don't want them to look really small. I want them to grow proportionately. And the same thing uh, with transform objects and transform patterns. I have some, some patterns in here that I also want to have scaled. So with everything checked there, I can click okay. And now I know that I've I've scaled this properly. So I'm gonna get my selection tool, everything's still selected, and I'm gonna align it to the bottom corner of this artboard. And let me just try and get this a little bit closer to the edge there. All right, so step one is looking good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out the birthday things and the shark. Let me go ahead and, and delete him. Bye, Mr. Shark. Um, and one thing, let's see, I need to move this over just a little bit, making sure that my uh, keyboard increment is set. I'm going to Commander Control K and I've got it here at one pixel, that's good. So now I can use the arrow keys on my keyboard to just nudge that over and fill in the gap. Now, when I wanna remove the birthday hats from these fish here, now I'm gonna use a different keyboard increment to nudge with. So I'm gonna go Command or Control K. This time I'm gonna type in one inch and hit enter. And that way I can nudge this right back into place. So I kind of move it off to the side there. And then when I'm done removing the hat, I can move him back into place. So I'm gonna double click to go into isolation mode. And let's see, where am I here? Sometimes it takes several clicks. So now what I'll do is I'll delete that hat and then I can delete this little topper there. And this way I was able to edit this fish without having to ungroup it. And the reason I don't wanna ungroup it is because it has this nice uh, drop shadow and that is applied to the group. So if you ungroup something that has a drop shadow applied to the group, that drop shadow will disappear. I'm going into the appearance panel here just to show you that. So if I click actually while I'm inside of, of uh, isolation mode, I'm gonna have to select on something here and go up here to show you that. So if I click on group at the top of the appearance panel, now we can see that this outer glow, actually it's, I thought it was a drop shadow, but the outer glow is applied to the group. So that's why you don't wanna ungroup things that you've applied uh, effects to the group because you will lose that effect. Here I am, I'm still in isolation mode. And by the way, you can see that here in the layers panel. But what I do is just to get out of here, I can go back by clicking on this little arrow in the upper left corner. And once I'm back, everything is, you know, it's same original color, nothing is faded. And then I can just nudge him right back where he was with my arrow keys. All right, so let me do these other fish here and double click on him. Now I've entered isolation mode. And oh, by the way, if your double click isn't working, just go once again, Command or Control K. And here is that preference and preferences. Make sure double click to isolate is checked. Okay, so here I am inside the group. Now I can select 
the hat and the little pom-pom and back on out of here and put him back where he belongs. I like this nudging thing, but actually I could double click here, isolate him and then take care of that and that like that. So I don't even really have to move those things aside. That's just kind of a old habit of mine. I like to see things out, off to the side, especially with that outer glow there, it's easier to see against this background. Now I'll do the same thing over here, going to the octopus and he's looking good. Let me go over here, back to the fish friends layer. That's the layer that this is on. Now I can go to this fish, click on him. Let's see if I can get that hat. So it's just kind of a series of single clicks and double clicks there. All right, let me get rid of that. Great, and now I'll back out so that I am now on the layer. So I have all the objects on this layer you can see are a little bit darker. That's part of isolation mode. And then when I click this left arrow again, now I'm all the way back out and here my layers panel is back to normal. Okay, so we've gotten rid of a lot of the birthday effect here, but there's this birthday cake I need to take care of. So if I go, let's see, this time I am gonna nudge this aside because I really wanna do a little bit more with this birthday cake. Let's see if there is a group appearance applied here. So I'm gonna go to the appearance panel and see that this group actually doesn't have any special effect applied to it, that's great. So that means I can actually just go ahead and ungroup this because I've got some pieces and parts here that I want to have separate. So this is a group here. It doesn't have an appearance applied, so I'm gonna ungroup it. I'm not worried about losing anything there. And then I definitely don't want this cake but I might want some of these little starfish here. So let me get rid of that plate. And now I have a few more elements that I can use here. Then I'm gonna move the octopus over a little bit into the frame and I'm getting rid of the treasure chest and I'm gonna move some of these coral shapes here. And by the way, the appearance panel is also really good for this too. So this coral, for instance, let me get this little branch of coral here. I'm gonna copy it and paste it and just drag it over here for an example so we can see. So right now, this is just one path, I believe, as I can see right there. We're looking at it in the appearance panel and it tells us everything we need to know about this path. So right now it has an outer glow on it. I'm gonna close that so you can't see it. And then it has two fills. It's got this purple lavender fill, and then it's got a pattern fill on top of that. And you can see I have this pattern here in the swatches panel. So if I turn off the purple, you can see that pattern is kind of a little textural pattern there. And so it's just a nice way to add a little bit of texture to things to add pattern fills. And you can stack up fills in the appearance panel. And then of course, put this outer glow uh, behind it and everything's in its stacking order. So the outer glow is at the bottom and then there's the purple fill and then there's the pattern fill on top of that. So that's just a little insight into how I create these things. And the same thing's happening here with these starfish. They have uh, a drop shadow, in this case it's applied to the group, and then it's got a solid fill and then a pattern fill on top of it. And the pattern fill, let's look at this one, generally will have an opacity setting. So right now this one is um, on this coral here is 9% multiply. Um, if I click on this link here, I can have access to this. So if I want that texture to be darker and more prominent, all I have to do is dial that up or I can change the blending mode, and so forth. So that's kind of how I work with these. I'm gonna delete that. That's just a little bit of a side bit of information there. Okay, now I'm gonna just do some resizing here just to try and fill this space up a little more. And in the previous illustration, I had a shark and so all of these little fish are looking up at the shark, but now we don't have that shark here. So I'm gonna have to find another way to 
to have them looking at something. And right now I'm seeing all these bubbles, they're kind of getting in my way. So I'm gonna turn off the bubbles layer and I can always come back to those later. But that's a great thing about putting all of your artwork um, layered up so that it's really easy to turn things off and on when you're working on this. Maybe I'll turn off these uh, smart guides. That's Commander Control U, so you don't have to look at that flashing pink. All right, now just a little quick tip about document raster effect settings, and these are located in the effects menu. I'm using a lot of glows and drop shadows. Those are scalable uh, vector effects, but they're actually pixel-based effects or raster effects. And so they're displaying uh, right now at 300 PPI. So that's why everything looks really smooth and good. And if I wanted to print this, uh, it's ready to go. It's at 300 PPI. Uh, but if I'm working on this file and I'm finding that everything is kind of slowing down, I can always take this and turn it back to 72 PPI and the effects will be displayed at 72 PPI. They'll probably look just fine. But if I wanted to print this out, then I would have to go back and change it to 300 PPI. Um, or if I'm exporting this, for example, maybe as a TIFF or a JPEG, you won't have to worry about this setting because you're going to get to choose your resolution as you export. So that's just a quick tip about this document raster effect settings. Okay, so now here's another tip. Um, if you want to see what uh, your artwork looks like with everything sort of cropped to the edge of the artboard, you can go up to the view menu and choose presentation mode and it gives you this nice cropped view of everything. Uh, let me escape. So hit the escape key to get out of here and back to Illustrator. But um, there's another thing that I like to use when I'm working on uh, a piece of art like this, and that is just to create a bleed mask. So if I grab my rectangle tool and click on the artboard here, I can choose width and height. So I'm going to type in eight by 10, because that's the size of my artboard and click OK. And then I'm going to add a white stroke to this and then go in the stroke panel and make this a really thick stroke, like maybe 60. And let me move so we can see this here. Um, right now, it's just the default alignment, meaning that in 60 points of this stroke weight, 30 is on one side of the path, 30 is on the other side of the path. Oh, and it looks like it has a glow on it too, so I wanna get rid of that. Uh, let me go over here, go to the outer glow, and throw that away. So here I am in the appearance panel throwing away that outer glow. In the stroke panel, I'm going to choose a line stroke to outside and that just aligns it to the outside of this path. And then uh, let me align it to the arc board horizontally and vertically. And then we can see I need to move it up to this top layer here that I have called bleed mask. And now I can look at my artwork um, with that nice cropped edge there too. So I like to have a bleed mask layer here and that way I can turn it off and on as I need it. Okay, so I've jumped ahead here and made a few more changes and now there's just a couple of tips that I wanna give you before I wrap this up. And one has to do with this brush here which is a pattern brush that I created to make this seaweed. So when you wanna create a pattern brush and let me go ahead and just get these out of the way, um, I'm gonna drag this pattern brush artwork directly to the artboard so you can see the art that I used to create it. So this is the original brush art right here. This right here is a corner that was created by Illustrator automatically. And because I'm not using any corners in this drawing, it doesn't really even matter that it looks kind of strange there. So I really just wanted this. So if you take art like this and drag it into the brushes panel, you'll get a dialog box that asks you what kind of brush you wanna create. And in this case, I'm creating a pattern brush. So what I wanna do is edit this brush. I'll just move back over here. Now, if I take my paintbrush tool and with this brush selected here, and I just go ahead and drag, I can draw with this brush. But as you can see, it's going in the wrong direction. 
So to fix this, I could just draw in the opposite direction, but instead what I wanna do is just use this opportunity to show you how to edit a brush. So I've got this brush here, my original brush, and I'm gonna drag it to the new brush button at the bottom of the brushes panel to create a duplicate of that brush. And while this path here is selected, I'm gonna apply the duplicate to that path. Then I can edit this without disturbing any of the other brushwork in this file. So let me double click on this and then here are the pattern brush options. So let's see if I can move this so you can see it. Preview is checked and so when I make a change I should be able to see it here. I'm gonna choose flip along and that's gonna flip this so it's going in the right direction. Then I can also change the size here and make it larger. Um, you can also do this using um, the stroke weight as well. So that's another way to do this. And right here under scale, you have options. So you could choose to make this pressure sensitive right here um, and then just choose you know, your lowest percentage and your highest percentage with that pressure. But I've got it fixed here, so I don't really need to, to worry about that. And then if you want to, uh, this brush is already gonna take on the color that I have in my stroke panel, but if your brush is not working that way, maybe it's set to none, um, go ahead and change it to one of these other options here, and then you'll be able to color it um, just like I have. So if you need tips on this, just use this little um, icon here, and that will show you some more about the brush colorization methods. All right, so I have made my edit to this brush, I've chosen flip along and made it a little bit larger. And now I'm gonna click okay. And then it's gonna tell me, do you wanna apply this to the strokes or leave them? I definitely wanna apply it because I know it's only been applied to this one stroke here. So I'll use that. And now I can go in and say, okay, well, I like that stroke color there, that's fine, but I wanna add maybe a multiply blending mode like that. Okay, and one last tip now. I'm gonna just take these starfish and make a little adjustment here using the free transform tool. So here it is, if I go free transform tool, the shortcut is E, and then you get this little menu here, and I'm gonna choose free distort, and that allows me to just take any of the four corner points here in the, in the uh, bounding box and make some adjustments so I can just drag that one in. I just want to make this look a little bit more like it's on the same plane as the big clamshell behind it. Not anything major, but since this was flat on the front of the cake before, I think that can help it out a little bit. And then I'll get my selection tool by switching using the command or control key, and then back to this free distort of the free transform tool. And I can just make a little adjustment there to kind of give this a little bit more like it's in its own home. All right, so that was a quick tip. I love to make those kind of tiny adjustments with the free transform tool. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed these Illustrator tips. My name is Laura Coyle, and my website is lauracoylecreative.com, where you can find out about my courses, Illustrator coaching and help, and other Illustrator tips. And here on my YouTube channel, if you subscribe and turn on notifications, you'll know when my next tutorial is available. And thank you for watching.